It's a great pleasure to be here. Thanks a lot for inviting me. So my paper looks at natural disasters and labor markets. I'm sure most of you can remember the pictures of uh, the 2004 tsunami that hit uh, the Pacific and the massive destruction and hundreds of thousands of lives that it cost. And after that, what we observed were quite large inflows of aid into the regions that were affected by the tsunami. But we know very little what happened in the aftermath once these communities disappear from the spotlight. So the question I'm researching is uh, what happened to labor markets in the adjustment after they were hit with, with uh, this massive shock. And uh, so that's a little bit like looking through a kaleidoscope. I'm sure, maybe as a child or with children, you've looked through a kaleidoscope and you see a certain picture and that's a labor market in equilibrium before it gets hit by a large shock. And then it's like shaking the kaleidoscope and looking through it again. You see a picture and that's right after the shock and then the, the labor market will adjust again. So it's like turning it bit by bit until it will reach a new equilibrium. And so my research looks at what happens in between these two equilibria and how do labor markets adjust. And so just briefly, I'll talk now very briefly about what we would expect theoretically to happen, how I'm answering, trying to answer this question empirically, and uh, very briefly on the results. So theoretically, if uh, a local economy is hit with a very large uh, destructive natural disaster, we'd expect an immediate drop in demand. People will not go to the hairdresser anymore. They will not go to restaurants. Firms will have had their capital destroyed, so production will come to a halt. But on the other hand, um, often and, and gladly so, there's a lot of inflows of, uh, of resources to rebuild the communities. And so that would uh, exert upward pressure on prices, and that's particularly true for non-tradables, because these are the products that uh, have to be produced locally, and so their demand is inelastic, they cannot be important. So that would ex exert upward pressure on non-tradable sectors, such as the service sector, or also the construction sector, which is uh, um, limited in tradability. Empirically, um, I'm using data from Indonesia to answer this question. And Indonesia is particularly well suited to answer it because they have a lot of earthquakes. And um, for example, here, this is uh, where the 2004 December tsunami happened. But then, so the epicenter of the earthquake was here. And uh, they have a lot of earthquakes because the tectonic plates meet here and uh, the Australia plate moves northwards and that causes inter and intra uh, plate earthquakes and um, here you can see the Sumatra fault. So what the map shows in green dots are the communities where the people in my sample live and that's the Indonesia Family Life Survey. It's a very large uh, longitudinal data set, one of the best longitudinal data sets we have available worldwide. And uh, because people are tracked, so these people have been tracked since 93 and they've been re-interviewed in 97, 2000, and then again in 2007. So it's always the same person. And uh, in red, that's all major earthquakes. And so what I combine the individual level data with is data from the US Geological Survey that collects very detailed information on the exact epicenter of earthquakes and uh, the depth and magnitude of them. So I can link these two. And basically what I do, this is Jogjakarta, uh, and they had a large earthquake in 2006. So what I do is I draw concentric circles from the epicenter of the earthquake to look at the different effects when you move away from the epicenter of the earthquake. And um, what I find so far is that, that there is... The biggest losses people experience are those who were working in the manufacturing sector before the earthquake. They experience serious drops in earnings growth, and the same is true for people working in the service sector. On the other hand, people who move into construction after an earthquake 
they actually um, experience wage premium above uh, what we could explain by their education and by their work experience. And just to conclude, given that we can expect uh, natural disasters, so those correlated with temperature and extreme weather events to increase in the future, I think it's really important to understand what, how labor markets react and uh, what happens to them to be able to react to those shocks better. Thanks very much. Do you expect uh, your, uh, your study to result in some <coughs> changes in the way of we deal with the relief before following a, a major disaster? Do we, will we have a better way to, to deal uh, of, uh, after a disaster uh, through uh, influencing uh, the labor market based on your results? Do you see this kind of uh, consequences of your study? I think um, one reason why there might be rises, for example, in the premium that construction workers experience might be due to the inelastic supply in the construction sector. And uh, that's something that policies, policy makers could address. That's a problem also in post-conflict societies when there is a, a sharp increase in the demand for construction. Similarly, if we see that manufacturing sector workers are hurt the hardest, some of the relief efforts maybe should be targeted to reconstructing their livelihoods. So yeah, I think so. And are policymakers interested in that? Do you, are there arena in which to discuss this type of stuff? Um, I think so. <laughs> My impression is yes. yes. Okay, thank you again. Mm -hmm.